Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about a special type of constraint in SQL called the primary key. Now, the reason that I wanted to make a whole video on this type of constraint, rather than just putting it with the other constraints in the previous video, is that primary key is used so often and in so many different ways in SQL that I wanted to give it a little bit of special attention. So first, let me define what a primary key is. A primary key is basically any column in your table, or it could even be a collection of columns in your table, as we'll see and it has to satisfy three conditions. That column has to be unique, so I can never have two records that have the same value in that column. It has to be not null, so I cannot have null values in that column. And each table can have at most one primary key. We'll see what happens if you try to violate that at the end of this video. That's the definition, but what's the motivation? So if I know that there's a column or a collection of columns in my table that is unique, has not null, and it's the only primary key, that column or collection of columns can basically serve as a unique identifier. For example, to make some concrete example, we're going to be setting the name column of our student data as the primary key first. So if I know that name is primary key, then I know that no two students can have the same name. Name cannot be null. And this is the only primary key. So if I know if I'm given the name of a student, I know there's only one record in the data that matches that name. So that uniquely identifies a student. That's why it's important that it's unique. And it's also important it's not null, because if there's a bunch of null values in my name, it becomes really hard to tell what student I'm talking about. So that's the motivation behind a primary key. Let's look at how to set one. So the first part of this statement is really the, pretty much the same as what came out of the constraints video. I'm, really, I'm putting all these really nice checks and validations for what can and cannot go inside my table. This last line is the new part. I'm saying set a constraint. The constraint's name will be name primary key. And the constraint says that I would like to set primary key as the name column in my table. So behind the scenes, SQL is saying, okay, I see you have a name column in your table. I see it's not null. Sometimes you have to explicitly check for not null. Uh, in this case, I did have to. Sometimes your database system will already set not null if you say it's a primary key. So check on that. Either way, um, it's going to enforce uniqueness already. So notice I didn't have to put unique for name because setting it as a primary key inherently says it has to be unique. So let me run that. Now let's see what's the result of that. I'm going to insert three rows into the data, and here they are, just some three students with some various data. What happens now if I try to insert another student with the name Yoda when there's already a student with the name Yoda in the data? I should get an error, right? Because since Yoda, or because name is the primary key of my table, I should not be able to have duplicates. And indeed it says unique constraint failed because I cannot have duplicates. To do one last check, let's see what happens if I try to insert uh, just GPA, major, and year, so ignoring the name column. Basically, if I didn't have any checks right now, it would just set that as null, but I don't want that, right? Because since name is my primary key, I want to make sure it's not null. So if I try that, I also get not null constraint failed students.name. So in both cases, it maintained the integrity of my primary key, which is good. Now let's go one step further. Let me drop the table so I can recreate it again. Let's look at a multi-column primary key. Because in all reality, you might have two students with the same name. So maybe it doesn't make too much sense to set name as your primary key. So if we're getting a little fancier, maybe we can say that, all right, we can have students with duplicate names, but we're going to enforce that every combination of name, major, and year shall be unique. So what that kind of means is, okay, I can have two students with the same name. I can even have two students with the same name and major. What I can't have is two students who have the same exact name, major, and year. And that's what setting a multi-column primary key will achieve. So the syntax is pretty much the same, as you can see. I'm going to run this cell. And let's see what the result is. I'm going to insert the same three students into the data. Now I'm going to insert three more records, which are similar in some ways and different in others. So the first record I insert is a student with the name of Yoda, who's in year three. So that so far matches the first row. But their um, major is computer science, which does not match physics. So this should be legal because it's not a full match on name, major, and year. Similarly, in the second one, I'm going to insert a student who is a third year math major, which matches the second row, but the names don't match up, so I should be okay to insert this. And lastly, inserting a student named Kylo, who's a physics major, but it's a first year, whereas this one's a second year. So these should all execute just fine. And if I look at what's in my students, I see I have six students, and nothing's been violated so far. What would be a violation is if I try to insert a student whose name is Ray, who's a math major, in her third year, because that's the full match of the primary key on this record here. So I should get an error, 
which I do. Unique constraint is failed. So that's how you set a multi-column primary key. Now the last major um, one I want to look at is setting an auto incrementing integer primary key. So sometimes you don't really want your primary key as any of the useful data columns in your table. You just want it as some integer that's unique, like one, two, three, four, which is a column in your data. You're never really going to use it for any real intelligent purposes, but it's just there to maintain that you have unique records. That's where this auto incrementing integer primary key comes in. So this is going to look a little scary, but I'll walk you through it. Um, notice that if you're setting a single column as your primary key, you can actually do a shortcut. So here I've created a new column called student ID. It's an integer, which I'm saying is not null. And again, if you're setting a single column as your primary key, instead of doing this whole um, constraint business down here, you can go ahead and just put that primary key information at the end of declaring that column. So I'm saying this student ID is my primary key, and I'd like you to auto increment it. Let's see what that does. So I run this, and now I'm going to insert uh, into my data the four columns I actually care about. So name, GPA, major, year, and just putting in some students in here. So if I run this, notice I didn't put in student ID explicitly anywhere. So one idea is that maybe it's null right now because I didn't say what it was, but it shouldn't be null because I said it's not null. So what's actually in there? Let's take a look. So we see that it just intelligently fills in these numbers one, two, three as I go. As I put more records, it's just going to auto increment, which is what this keyword did, the next number that it hasn't seen so far. And that's really nice because now I'm guaranteed that every row has a unique student ID, but I didn't have to explicitly think about what that student ID would be. It's just kind of filled in for me. So this is another way to use a primary key. And um, this kind of stays no matter what. So if I tr delete some uh, stuff from the table, it'll just keep putting the next number it hasn't seen so far. So here I'm deleting Vader and I'm deleting this student ID two along with him. And then I'm trying to insert another student. Let's see what happens. So we see Vader is gone. So that student ID two is gone. But when I inserted a new student, they just got student ID four because that's the th next number it hasn't seen so far. All right, to round out this video, I want to show what happens if you try to set two primary keys on your table. So here I have created a table and I put one primary key as name, and I try to put another primary key as year. So if I try to do that, it yells at me and says, hey, you already have a primary key on your table. So this is just showing that you're only allowed to have up to one primary key on your table. So I hope this was a good in-depth understanding of how primary keys work in SQL, and in the next video we'll be looking at foreign key, all right? So until next time.